Hey y'all, it's Peter Fry, and welcome to the Living with Hope podcast, a weekly conversation where we dig into God's Word and explore what it means to live with hope in Jesus. See what I did there? I used y'all. I'm trying. I'm trying to get this Southern thing down. Ever since we moved to North Carolina, and I feel like a poser whenever I say y'all, but I'm trying. I'm trying. Hey, it's Thanksgiving week. It's just me on the podcast this morning. It's early morning, and I wanted to stop in and talk about something that's been on my heart. I put together a video for a church recently where I was teaching through Romans chapter 8. And many of you know, if you've been listening to the podcast, Romans chapter 8 has been something I've been spending a lot of time ruminating on. And ruminating is a good word. It's like meditating that, okay, here's how I use it. Medit- when you meditate on God's word, you're just kind of like filling your mind with it. But ruminating is where I like fill my mind with it and just kind of let it sink down into my soul. Um, I have no idea if that's a technical definition of ruminating, but that's how I use it. Anyways, there is a great, wow, wow. This is, I can tell already, this is going to go all kinds of places today. I'm trying to keep this podcast short, Uh, but I got to tell you this. There's a Hebrew word for meditating that's used in the Old Testament that's also used for when a dog, okay, um, a dog is like growling over his bone. Ollie has the, Ollie, our our standard poodle, has this... uh, rawhide stick that we don't usually give him rawhide but it was a gift to him and so we have done this thing where he's not allowed to eat it but he can carry it around and it it's quite cute anyways the point is he like is very protective of this piece of rawhide and so he will sometimes like growl over it he'll like uh it's like a involuntary like And there's this Hebrew word for meditate that is also used of like an animal that growls over a bone. And it's this kind of all-consuming taking in of something. I I just find that an amazing picture. Uh, Eugene Peterson in his book, Eat This Book, talks about that kind of reading of the word where it is just an all-consuming involuntary growl happens. Anyways, I've been ruminating on Romans chapter 8 and a there is a image that Paul gives about living in a broken world. And I think it's a really helpful, it's not just an image, it is an actual description of our present experience in this broken world as a people who put our hope in Jesus, that we believe that there is more to this present moment than what meets the eye, that there is something future, but also that future hope it brings a present reality for believers in Jesus that changes how we approach the brokenness of this world. And it's Thanksgiving week, and as I've been thinking about gratitude and Thanksgiving and Romans chapter 8, I have this thought, and I'm going to read Romans chapter 8, verse 18 through 25, and I want you to hear this. This word from the perspective of, uh, I've talked about how Romans chapter 8 is this explanation of benefits of the gospel. Paul's unpacking everything that came up to this moment in Romans of the glorious gospel that God did what we could not do by, by living a perfect sinless life in Christ and he took the punishment that we deserved and in that reality and through his resurrection power, we have a freedom in the gospel and we have a new perspective and power for living in this broken world. And so hear this word from Romans chapter 8 verses 18 through 25 and I just want to make a quick observation that I hope 
can guide our thoughts and our hearts going into this Thanksgiving week. He says, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. Let me just summarize those few verses real quick. We have a future hope that makes our present suffering worth it. Okay, now listen to this. Verse 22. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. Now, the pains of childbirth are something that takes us right back to Genesis chapter 3. When sin entered the world, we see the results, the effects, the brokenness that sin entering the world uh, brought about. And so, um, there is this uh, ripple throughout all of human history of brokenness that is a result of sin being in the world. And the pains of childbirth are the iconic representation of that ripple effect. Okay? So, we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the chain, in the pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, Grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for the adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. I want to make a quick observation about something that Paul describes here in this description of living with hope in a broken world. And that is the difference between groaning and grumbling. I think that this is an important distinction specifically for this moment in time, this cultural moment that we find ourselves in in 2020, the year of a pandemic, a political election, all kinds of stuff happening in the world. And what I see when I look at social media, when I uh, hear people talking in conversations, I hear a lot of grumbling. And I think that there is a difference between grumbling and groaning. And Paul describes that the posture of hope, the perspective of hope, is groaning. But I would suggest that the posture of discontentedness, the posture of focusing on the brokenness without hope, is the posture of grumbling. Because what grumbling does is it looks at the brokenness of the world with this dissatisfaction. And I think we all feel that. We look at the brokenness of the world and we say it's not supposed to be this way. But the perspective of hope groans in that moment. There's this, ah, this is not the ultimate. This is the the brokenness I see here. There's something better and I long for that. But grumbling is the groaning without the longing. It it stops with the dissatisfaction. It simply sits in it. And, And I would suggest that groaning with hope leads to gratitude. But grumbling without hope leads to discontentedness. And notice how Paul concludes this section. But if we hope... For what we do not see, if we live with hope, even when we don't see it in this broken world, we wait for it with patience. Now, waiting with patience is categorically different than grumbling. And I would suggest as we go into this week of Thanksgiving, we have so much to be grateful for. 
specifically for those who've put our faith in Jesus, that we have, as it says in Romans chapter 8, verse 1, no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. There is freedom. There is life and peace in the Spirit, as it says in verse uh, 6, to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. And so we have this hope that leads to groaning with gratitude. It's okay to look at the world and say, oh, I wish it wasn't this way. Oh, I wish this broken situation was uh, remedied. But here's, here's the perspective of hope, how hope shifts us from this perspective of grumbling to groaning in that groaning longs for God's redemptive work. And, and it says, I long for this world to be made right. And we know from the perspective of hope that one day there will be a full redemption of this earth. But until that day, we wait for it with patience. And so there's this patient discontent that leads to, I think, a groaning with gratitude rather than a groaning with grumbling. And so here's my challenge to you today, encouragement to you today. As you look at the world around you, and I, I recognize that these are tricky times to navigate. We're heading into holidays, and I'm sure that there are going to be broken situations that you are going to enter with family and friends, and you're trying to navigate this, and your heart's tendency is going to be to grumble about those situations. But as Christians, as people who have hope, would we enter this season with a kind of groaning that leads to gratitude and patient waiting upon the Lord? It's this posture of our hearts where we don't stop with discontent, but we turn to our hope and find our contentment in Jesus. And it changes how we see the world. It changes how we see ourselves. And it changes how we live today. And so I long for my heart as I look and feel and experience the brokenness that I would have a kind of gratitude of groaning that matches what Paul describes here in Romans chapter 8. And as we do, as we look to these invisible realities of our faith, as we turn our eyes to Jesus, we find that the things of earth grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Brothers and sisters, go in peace today to live in the realities of our hope.